Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at general formulas and I'm also going to be looking at skeletal formulas. These are the two uh, formulas I said I'll be talking about from the last video and this video. Uh, general formulas, let's take a look at that first. Now general formulas are basically um, a formula used to represent all the members of a particular family of organic compounds. So for example we could have, and this is an algebraic formula so that means we've got some algebra involved in the formula. So if we take a look first at maybe alkanes, alkanes, I will be making some videos about alkanes um, quite soon. Uh, the, for, the general formula for alkanes, uh, first of all, actually, in order to show you what, why this, um, actually, yeah, yeah, let's go straight into the, the formula. If we take a look at the formula of alkanes, uh, the general formula of alkanes, it's CnH. 2n plus 2. Now, if we take a look at one member of this uh, family of compounds, so one member of the alkanes, methane, which is the simplest one, it's a carbon with four hydrogens. And if you compare this uh, CH4, which I've got here, with this general formula, with this algebraic general formula, you can see that basically the subscript here. Um, obviously this this subscript here is a one in this case so we don't show it but if the one was there we know that the one would represent this n and so if we put the one into this part of the formula we get two times one which is two plus two which is four which would produce the ch4 all just from knowing the number of carbon atoms and so with ethane ethane which is the second um, simplest alkane that has two carbons. We can we we two carbons, so we can basically put this two into this formula and work out the formula of it without even drawing it. And that's one of the the usefulness. That's one of the things that's useful with a general formula. You can work out the formula without actually writing out the the structure. So if I put a two in here, this is going to be C two H. 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 6, H6. And if we actually draw this out, bear in mind alkanes are the ones which have are just single bonds. It's going to be a C bonded to a C with the H's like this. So as, as you know, carbon only bonds makes four bonds. So most of the time. So yeah. So as you can see, looking at this and comparing it with this formula and where I got it from, you can see this is C2H6, just like um, I wrote out in the formula. And which one was faster to write out? Of course, it was this um, from, from this rather than from that. So, so you can see the general formula helps save some time. Uh, and a homologous series, this is something which is an important concept which leads on from the idea of a general formula. Basically, uh, this is just one uh, general formula for a homologous series. This is the one for the, se the series which is for, um, well, the alkanes, basically. The alkanes is a homologous series. And um, uh, this, an, a homologous series is basically a, a, a group of um, uh, organic molecules which have uh, the, the, same, the same functional group, a common, basically, what the, the same functional group uh, in this case, the functional group is just the fact that uh, each carbon in the chain has only one single bond. And uh, the second thing is it has the same general formula. And as you can see, the general formula represented by this particular homologous series, the alkanes, is this. So we have the same functional group. Of course, this isn't bonded to any other carbons, but it has the same functional group. It has a, uh, just a basic carbon. And... Um, it also has the same uh, general formula. So this is a homologous series. And we can also take a look at another example of a homologous series, the alkenes. Alkenes. The difference between alkenes and alkanes, you probably learned this before, but if you haven't, the difference between the two are that alkanes have uh, single bonds. Just any bonds, any bonds between carbons are single bonds. But alkenes contain at least one uh, double bond. So in a homologous series of alkenes, we're just looking at the alkenes with just one double bond in the whole chain. Uh, an alkene would basically have uh, 
carbon double bonded to another carbon and then uh, maybe hydrogens or another carbon but those extra carbons would be single bonded for the ones which um, we represent in the in the um, general formula so if we take a look at the general formula of this it's going to be C well it's a bit too yellow it's going to be C2 well no CN H sorry I was thinking of e, ethane e, ethene CNH2N so this is the general formula for alkenes now and if we take a look at the simplest one oh yeah another part of this rule for this particular general formula is that N has to be greater than or equal to 2 but don't worry too much about this at the moment you can obviously deduce why because of the fact that this has to have a double bond in it and if there's only one carbon you can't have a carbon carbon double bond because it's just yeah so n is greater than 2 and so if I draw out this structure of it it's gonna be um, well if we have ethane it's gonna be n is gonna be 2 so we're gonna have two carbons and four hydrogens so two carbons and four hydrogen probably familiar with ethene already but yeah this is ethene so yeah that's the basically the concept of general formula and homology series and now let's take a look at skeletal formulas now skeletal formulas is another type of formula it's similar to actually displayed formulas but you don't actually show the carbons and you also have a um, almost a zigzag as you draw go along the carbon chain so I've got two examples here which you, which I've put here to help me explain and help you guys understand this concept. Uh, basically, when you have a carbon chain in skeletal formulas, there's a couple of things which, um, when you randomly write them, you notice a pattern of, of things you, you, you'd observe. First of all, one of the things is we don't show uh, hydrogens in skeletal formulas when they're bonded to carbons. Uh, so, for example, all of these hydrogens here, uh, we don't actually write H's. And the, other, the second thing is we don't write C's. So we don't actually draw the carbons. We just um, indicate the presence of a carbon by changing the... Um, by wait, Basically, we have as we draw on the zigzag, not necessarily we're going to have a zigzag, but if, if it's just two carbons. But as we draw a skeletal formula, if I just show you, we're going to have one carbon, and we, we show that it's bonded to the other carbon like that. And if there's another carbon, we actually um, change direction and zag, so zigzag. And so that this would basically show you that there's three carbons. So at the edge end of the lines we have a carbon, and at the um, any bends in the lines we have a carbon. So using this idea, we can actually draw a really long carbon chain. So we could have um, it keep going like that, and we can see now that we've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 carbons. And it could be just as simple as one line. So at the end of these two lines, we have two carbon atoms. And the second thing, as I said, we don't draw the hydrogens on here, but we know it's a hydrocarbon. Uh, so looking at this, well, we know that carbon, we know that carbon bonds to four, well, it, carbon forms four bonds pretty much all of the time. So there's going to be, since this is a, there's only each carbon is only bonded to another carbon, we can basically assume or deduce from this that this carbon, each of these carbons are going to be bonded to three hydrogens. And if you remember from before, this is ethane. Now, this is showing you this example here. Let me uh, get rid of. Oh, oh yeah, another thing. But I'll explain that when I was I'm drawing out the structure of this. Uh, when we have things bonded to the carbon like this chlorine here, we still show the bond between the carbon and the chlorine. Did we? As a, but still, we don't show the C. We show the bond between the carbon and the chlorine, and we draw the C out. So we actually do show the C out. So it, um, to represent this, let's start from here and go along. So this is the first carbon here. One, two carbons, three carbons four carbons one two three four carbons so these are the carbons in this chain and as you as you probably noticed I haven't yet drawn the chlorine but if I now draw another line so as I said we need to draw the bond between the carbon and the chlorine so I draw another line and I show the, the CL 
is there. So that is basically the skeletal formula of this. And the fact that there's a, there's a CL at the end of the line, the fact that there's a species at the end of this line, shows you that this is just a bond. There's no actual carbon here. So you can, when you're counting up, remember that if it's like a carbon bonded and then there's line and then there's a species at the end, there's not actually a carbon here. The carbon chain ends there and then it's just bonded to a CL. So yeah. One, two, carbon one, two, three, four, and that would be one, two, three, four. But anyway, moving on to the second example, which is this one here. I've decided to do that so that I can actually show you what, what would happen if we have a double bond and uh, maybe on this floor in here. First of all, let me draw the carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five carbons. Let's start by going upwards. So one, one, two, three, four, five carbons. And the second thing we notice is that one, two, three, four, on carbon four, there's a fluorine. So we need to write that, we need to draw that on there. So one, two, three, four. And to be honest, it would be okay to draw the fluorine going up or going, uh, well, to draw the bond between the carbon and the fluorine going up or down. But I prefer to do it um, pointing in the same direction as, you know, the that part of the skeletal formula. So I what I prefer to do is like, I'll just do that. I'll draw the fourth flooring up here because you have more space to draw it. And we can also see at, right at the end here, we have a carbon which is double bonded to an oxygen. And we'd also, I, I also would... um. When I'm drawing the fact that the carbon is double bonded to the oxygen, I'll draw it pointing in the direction of this thing. And it's pointing downwards in this case, so I'll draw the oxygen, uh, the bond to the oxygen here, like that. And so as you can see, this is the way I just drew the double bond, like that. And then the oxygen, we draw, draw an oxygen, because oxygen is not hydrogen, so we, we, we do show it. So yeah, this would be that molecule. So yeah, what you could probably probably want to do is practice um, right, uh, having a displayed formula and drawing it out as a skeletal formula. And it's a very good idea to check like check your carbons uh, after you've drawn a skeletal formula because it's pretty easy to make a mistake with this. I've made mistakes a lot with like drawing out this stuff. But yeah, that's basically um, that's basically general formulas and skeletal formulas. So I hope you guys have found this video helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video.